Hey guys, AP here, and today we're going to be working on the third person camera of this three part camera series. So, the first thing we need to do is I'm going to add a little segment to these tutorials where I show you what you're going to be adding, and then I'm going to teach you how to add it. So, here is the third person camera, and so what you can do is you can use, if you click the right uh, button on your mouse, you can zoom in and out, and if you click the left, you can move around your camera around the object that you're targeting and so also I've added where you have a thousand small little cubes I'll just zoom out to show you so we have a thousand little cubes that are in like a 50 by 50 space and they're all random uh, position and random rotation and it just looks cool when you're doing a uh, third person because you get to see the depth uh, how the depth of the cubes in front and behind work. So we have this cube, which is the main cube, and then we have all these uh, randomly generated cubes. I'll teach you how to add that uh, because you just need a entity array with a thousand or how many ever entities you want. And then down here, you can just say entities I and for a for loop that goes a thousand times, new model, uh, which model you want to use uh, the next float like random dot next float random dot next float and then times 50 then we got random dot next float times 360 because there's 360 degrees and then the main one is just in the center of all these and so now and then you render them all and also there was a bug in the um, uh, render the shader dot use matrices where it's in here but if you wanted to render more than one model, then it wouldn't work. It would only render the last one. So if you go to render and you go to render model entity, you can see that if you put it here, it'll render all the cubes. So that's a fix that uh, there's a problem. So it's fixed now. And now let's get started with the camera. So instead of repurposing this function into uh, a new like third person, I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna say public void update. It's the same thing, but instead of having just the window, you also have a target or a model entity. So model entity target. And now with this, you can actually get all the stats from the entity that you want. So import model entity. And we'll let's get started. So the first thing we need is obviously the new mouse and old mouse difference. So I'm going to copy this and just get rid of this. So now that we have that, we have the difference between the X and Y. So like I said in the last tutorial, it gets the difference between the last frames and the current frames, uh, just in like from the past one to the now one. And we can use that to actually move the camera. So we're going to do if window dot uh, is key pressed or is key down or not is key. Since we're using the mouse for this, what we need to do is mouse uh, down. So is mouse down, then we have glfw dot glfw. Uh, mouse button left because we're going to do left first then we're just going to put in how to move it up and down so we need to do this dot add rotation uh, <laughs> we can just copy this here so if we run this and uh, where is it? Actually, no. Yeah, okay. So, it should work, but in a weird way. So, entity. Because I want to rotate it around the main entity. So, if we see this, and we move our mouse around when we click the mouse, we should, yeah, we should just move the current one. That's not what we want. So what we need to do is we actually need to change uh, some variables. So we need to have a couple variables defined up here. So we need private 
float distance and that's going to be the distance away from the target and then we need we're going to set that equal to two uh because we're using OpenGL coordinates and OpenGL coordinates uh, go from zero to one and so two is pretty good and then we need to do angle which is the angle around the target so like the angle think of it as a circle around the target entity and that is and the radius is the distance so now that we have angle we can actually tell where on the circle it is. So we go back to update and we do instead of this to add rotation to both of these, uh, we can have it for the pitch, that's fine. But then when you said this to zero, and also pitch is the X rotation. We need to add the angle and then subtract it from the same amount. So DX times mouse sensitivity so what should happen is we should only move the pitch because we're only only affecting this one but we can use some math to uh change the angle which i'll show you uh later on once we get the other one so now we actually need to do the right which is the distance so window dot is mouse down glfw dot glfw mouse button right then all we need to do is do some if statements so if distance is greater than zero because if it's great if it's less than zero then we will be opposite of the entity and we won't be able to see it so we need to check if it's greater than zero or actually greater than equal than zero then we will do some distance calculations. So distance is our distance minus equals uh, dx or dy because we're going to do it up and down times mouse sensitivity. And so it's not the same. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. So now uh, if we do this, nothing will happen because we need to implement some math. But it should be able to, once we click the right button, we can move our cursor up and down. And it should change how far we are away from the target. So we also need the else statement here to say if it's actually less than zero, then we need to make distance zero. So it doesn't glitch out. And so uh, now we have all the input in, we can actually do the math, which... Since I have, I cannot remember the math for the life of me, I'm just going to get it from the file right over here. So I'm going to open it, and I'll, I'll explain the math. It's just right now, uh, I can't remember it. So after we do this, we have the math, and we have the variables, and then the set position, and then rotation. So I'll explain the math. So... Horizontal distance, which is what this means, and vertical distance, basically means we're trying to find the other two values from the camera to the target. So think of this like the distance, horizontal distance, and vertical distance as a triangle. And so as a triangle, the distance is the hypotenuse, and horizontal distance is one of the legs, and vertical distance is the other leg. So... We can use some trigonometry functions, math, math dot cosine and math dot sine, to actually get the horizontal distance and the vertical distance. So, to get the hyp uh, to get the cosine of an angle, which is the pitch or rotation dot get x, we need to uh, divide the. Uh, opposite which is horizontal distance over the hypotenuse which is distance and to get actually no that's sine cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse sine is opposite over hypotenuse so doing some backwards math if you actually multiply it you can get the original distance so 
to get the X and Z of the uh, camera, we need to get the angle of both the target and the angle that we have set with our input. And we need to multiply it to get it. Because it's the same concept as this. And also that's the same for Z except it's cosine. And so now we set the position by offsetting it from the target. So we have a target for all three. But instead of putting a Y here, we do vertical distance because Y doesn't really have be affected by uh, the, get the uh, trigonometry functions. And so I'm just going to comp this out to see, show you that it works so far, but in a way that isn't correct. So when we run this, we have this. Uh, we can do, we can change the pitch here, okay, but if we move this, you can see that we're not actually facing the camera. Of course, we can zoom in and out, but we are not actually facing the camera. We're just kind of rotating around it, and this is not what we want. So the line rotation.setY, which I'll do that, negative target.getRotation.getY plus angle uh, faces, makes the camera face the other way, so Pause right here if you need to copy all of this down. And that should be it for the camera, the third person camera. So if we do this, uh, it should load up. Now we can actually uh, zoom in and out and we cannot go through it. So we zoom out and this is the same exact as we see in this one. So I'm going to exit this out, maximize this. And we can actually rotate. So go back. In. And so, oh wait, that's backwards. I can fix that. Oh, uh, where is it? It's right here. So we're actually going to add that instead of subtract. And yeah. So, uh, yeah. So you can change the values if you want. Like, this may be too fast for you. It's fine for me. But this may be too slow for you, but it's fine for me. Like, you can change the values if you want. So it's not... It's, it's very, uh, you can, I made it able to where you can change the values of the mouse sensitivity with the set functions, which I put in the last tutorial. And yeah, that should be the it. This should be it for this three-part tutorial series on the camera. And you should have two functions which take either a win, which take, both take a window, but one takes a target for the third person. So... First person, which is one where you can uh, use the keyboard, and third person is the mouse. So just remember that. So this is it for this tutorial. Uh, next tutorial, we should be doing OBJ loading, which should take a little bit to get done. So I'm just trying to get these camera things out so I can work on that. But yeah, so that should be it. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye.